Hello, welcome to the Synth Shed, and today I'm going to look at the Akai MPC Live 2 and the Machina Plus, specifically their the way they tr they structure projects and their internal workflow um, sequences, patterns, etc. Because if you are coming to one of these for the first time and you're used to arranging in a door, or if you're thinking of switching from one to the other, then I think it's really important to understand um, a bit about how they work and if that's going to suit you. Because if you look on eBay or the classifieds, you'll see that people buy these machines and then kind of give up on them quite soon because they're maybe a bit freaked out by the way they work. Of course, with time, you'll get used to them. But the point is they do both do things a bit differently. And I think it's worth knowing that before you even start. So, um, and the way I would sum it up is that the MPC Live is um, more kind of timeline based, you know, building up a song in sections or what the MPC calls sequences and then stringing those sequences together in a linear fashion. Um, so it doesn't represent it like a timeline, it doesn't look like a door, like logic, but the con conceptually it, it works like that. Whereas Machina Plus conceptually obviously has the machine, native instruments, machine workflow, and that starts from a different concept. That starts from create loads of patterns, um, arrange those into scenes and experiment with them till you uh, find um, an arrangement that works essentially. Um, so more fluid, maybe more playful and really more comparable to something like Ableton Live Session View. That's how I think of it. And again, it doesn't lay it out exactly like Ableton Live Session View, but as I'll show you, they, they are, they're definite parallels. So let's have a look at them both now. You can get a better idea of which one might work better for you. The basic building block for projects on the MPC Live 2 is the sequence. And if you come to the main page, which has its own button here, you are presented with this screen in three parts, sequence, track, and program. And as I said, sequence is the main building block and think of a sequence as a section of a song. And you can uh, scroll through the sequences one, two, three, four, five, six, etc., and you can name them whatever you want, uh, and you can set up templates so they you know, if you have a particular way of working, your sequences are all um, done a certain way. So these are just like dummy ones here. I've set up intro, vox break, drop, etc. Um, and if I hit the list, open it up, you can see under sequence here all the different sequences and like I said I've named them so it's obvious they work like sections and then you can see unused sequences go on forever um, but going back to the main screen so that's where your sequences live for every sequence you have any number of tracks you need basically and a track is just where you assign your different sounds or programs so um, looking inside sequence one, you can see I've got track one set to drums with a drum program on it. In this case, a Chicago house kit. Track two, I've named bass and have assigned a bass sound from one of the plugins, uh, chords, etc. So, and then again, lots of unused track because I haven't assigned them or created anything in them. And as you go through each sequence, you can have a different makeup of tracks. You can add new tracks. Um, but generally when you're working um, towards a final song and those sequences are going to fit together, you kind of want to keep that track structure consistent within it. Um, because what you're building in each sequence or section is like a vertical slice of your timeline. And when it comes to arranging it at the end, when you go into um, the menu and choose song mode then you can see the sequences we've created so far all appear here as you can see you just insert sequences and then you can choose what order everything goes in by just 
changing with the scroll wheel what appears in each slot of the sequence that way you can build up your arrangement very very quickly and easily but the the point is that you can't really um break down those sequences to like um the patterns they're made of each sequence once you've created that vertical stack it kind of stays intact and you just move that sequence around um, so you have to be quite intentional in this workflow um, this, this is why it can help to have a template because you're you know used to working a certain way and you set that up so it's ready to go every time you don't have to keep naming sequences and setting up tracks every single time you do a project because if you do there's a lot of duplication so there is for instance uh, one, one important thing to know is that unlike the machina plus there's no patterns in the mpc workflow that might sound strange like you have a sequence that's made up of tracks and within those tracks um you have obviously event information you have you know you can see these notes within the bass track for instance but there is no uh, pattern in the mpc vocabulary there's no button for patterns if you want to copy the events from this track somewhere else you um you have to go into the um settings and you can copy events in the current sequence and you can choose which track of the sequence you want to move things around to so straight away you get some sense of the fact that from this main page you can do a lot but you have to go into uh, either the sequence menu or the track menu when you want to start duplicating things creating variations creating new track creating new sequences on the machina plus the basic building blocks are organized according to groups group a group b group c group d and as you can see they're color coded to so the screens and the pads change so you always know what group you're in which is very useful even uh, even if you don't name things and to some extent it means you don't really have to name things because you get that very obvious visual cue once you're used to working with the, with the groups um, and so every group what, what does a group mean a group basically means you have a set of sounds or, or a kit loaded into the pads so the group is the sound or set of sounds and it's also if we switch from pad mode to pattern mode it's also the patterns that are contained within that group and again if you flick through the groups you'll see they all have their own patterns or some don't have a pattern yet but and those patterns only uh, pertain to the sounds in that particular group so the machine workflow goes from uh, groups building patterns then once you've got a whole bunch of patterns across different groups, you go into ideas mode and you create scenes and you assign through this very simple interva interface, just by scrolling um, the patterns from each group that you want to appear in that scene. Um, so if we select scene five here, is just showing you the patterns that are highlighted, the ones that will play if we hit play. Um, and so you can quickly experiment with and build up different combinations and variations, just like you can in Ableton Live's session mode. And then once you get a set of scenes that you're happy with, you can then kind of jam out the scenes by pressing this button. You can you know, hit play and move things around. And of course, you can also then actually go into song mode and start arranging those scenes into a timeline. If we look at how they uh, deal with like the most common operation, probably that you'll use in either workflow, simply duplicating a sequence or a pattern. You know, to do that in MPC Live or um, whether it's a sequence or a track, you hit the edit button from the main screen, you choose what you're going to do, where you're moving something from and to, and you hit go, then it happens and you go back. 
and then you carry on building. Now, when you click pattern mode on Machina Plus, if you want, if you've built a pattern or three patterns and you want to duplicate one of those and keep going, you literally hit duplicate, choose the pattern you want to copy, hit the next pad and you've got that pattern ready to go to build on. And it's exactly the same if you're in scene. And scenes, remember, are like combinations of patterns. You've got your scenes you've already made. You want to duplicate one. There it is. So, you know, buttons and, and key presses versus um, uh, touch screens and menu diving is a, is a big difference in the way these two operate. And, and that just that si simple um, operation that you're going to be doing probably all the time is one example. And also the same really goes through to when you are looking at things like the mix view, which we haven't touched on here, but I'll do in another video on, on uh, routing, etc. Uh, and the mix view in, in MPC Live. What you get is a, is a real simplified mixer in uh, in the Machina Plus doesn't have the functionality of a door kind of mixer, whereas MPC really replicates that quite well. The added complexity, things like sends and returns. Um, but again, for that to work, you need uh, you know more more of a menu driven approach, albeit by the touchscreen, which does make things quicker and easier. But over here on the um, on the uh, Machina Plus, you know, e even the fact that you've got a dedicated encoder straight up for every um, mixer, uh, sorry, every track in the mixer, versus having to, you know, use a touchscreen um, and access levels like that. You know, you you got to know what kind of feeling, you know, what what kind of um, workflow do you prefer? The touchscreen's great when it comes to, uh, for instance, saving and renaming things. You know, this is this is my uh, probably my single favourite thing of um, the MPC having the touchscreen is how easy it makes it to, you know, use a QWERTY keyboard. Even that makes it feel more like what you're used to running a door on your computer. Over on the um, Machina Plus, this is one of the like things I hate the most, renaming stuff. If you go into the um, file save, save as, um, uh, save as, sorry. Um, you know, you really want to touch that and type, but you can't, you have to use your, um, these buttons here, if ever you've had to use your remote control on a TV to enter a Wi-Fi password, oh my God, it's not far off, you know, doing that, um, using the encoder to move around. It's not too bad, but let's face it, no one can really bother to, to do that. And for that reason, to be honest, when I'm working in patterns, scenes and everything else, I hardly ever start naming stuff, you know, even, even the groups, which... You can rename a group, um, but I generally just leave them. The color coding means you don't really have to. If you if you create your own system and way of working, you kind of know where things are. Uh, setting up MIDI is really simple on the uh, Machina Plus. I've currently got two MIDI devices connected and powered up, the Moog Matriarch and the Digitone. So if you hit the settings button and come into the... Um, to the MIDI section. Um, so that's what we're on now. Um, these are all the MIDI settings, obviously. I'm just gonna focus on the right screen where you've got input devices and output devices. Um, and what you need to do whenever you attach a new uh, bit of hardware via USB or MIDI connects, you have to come in, select that. So there you go, there's Matriarch. And make sure status is on just toggle them so the first time you do it turn them all on and then machina will remember those connections as long as you have them plugged in every time you power them up it will um remember that status which is handy so you kind of once you've got your setup done you can 
set that and forget it. And then when you wanna actually um, set up a pad uh, to control um, one of those machines, this is what you do. You go back to the um, channel settings, same place we had earlier for um, setting the audio of any particular pad or of, of a whole group. But in this case, we're gonna MIDI control uh, the move matriarch from, uh, I'm gonna set up a new group F, the first pad here. Um, so we're gonna go to uh, channel, we're gonna select output, and then we're gonna go instead of audio, uh, we're gonna move it over to MIDI. You can see it's at the moment, it's obviously defaulted to none, no destination, but we are gonna change that to the move. And you see it's sort of shortened there, but that's the move. And then I know it's on channel five receiving. So we're gonna switch that up. And hopefully now when we press this pad, there you go, we can hear the sound of the move. Just turn that up a bit and do that again. Now, of course, you could do that with 16 of your hardware instruments, have them all on different um, pad. In order to pay, play them from here, you know, and use the machine of functionality, you switch to keyboard mode. There's the chromatic scale. And you can do nice things here because you can use the scale functions and even chords. Crazy stuff. Um, as as, as uh, using the machine as um, playing functions. And of course, things like ARP. Wait, uh, go into ARP mode. Let's see what happens here. Uh, keyboard, ARP. Well, that's pretty tasty, isn't it? <laughs> so there you are. Really straightforward. Moving over to the MPC Live to look at MIDI settings for external hardware now. I've already um, patched in um, my Move Matriarchs audio output. So it's coming into the uh, MPC. Just, just for simple monitoring purposes, I can check that with the speaker. There you go, you can see the um, levels there. Uh, and remember, we're still on the main page here. I've just switched to the audio tab um, to, to fix that routing and to switch the monitor uh, button to in so that we can actually hear it through the speaker. And then um, now in terms of controlling um, the Moog via MIDI, uh, obviously, first thing we've got to do, I've already called this track Moog. Uh, sorry, I should be saying Moog. Let's just ignore that for now. And um, uh, it's currently set to a drum program. So that's not gonna work because that's for loading up samples. So we change the uh, track type to MIDI. And again, this is where um, the MPC functions a lot more like a, a door where you have to create a new track and typically tell it tell the software what that track is going to be, MIDI, audio, whatever. Um, and then um, once we've done that, it gives us the options we need for setting up a MIDI program. And um, first thing you want to do, again, all from the same page, is tell it which port we have the MIDI going out of. Um, I've actually so already plugged in a MIDI DIN cable here to get to the Moog, Moog, and I'm gonna call it Matriarch from here on. Um, so that's set, and then we need the uh, MIDI channel. Now, there's MIDI channel selection here, so if we hit five, which, if I recall correctly, is what I have um, set on the Matriarch, we should, yes. So we're now playing the Matriarch from um, the pads on the MPC and hearing the sound routed through um, through the MPC's audio inputs and out the speaker. Um, the nice thing about this really compared to the uh, the way MPC 
handles MIDI. It's just the fact that, as I said, we've stayed on this main page um, where all our tracks, all our sequences are accessible. And without any uh, additional menu diving, we've been able to do um, the MIDI and audio routing very quickly, very easily from one place. I love the fact that um, you can switch MIDI channel, you know, uh, I'm often unplugging and plugging in and you don't always remember uh, or haven't got labeled what channel you last set that particular bit of hardware on. So having that there to scroll through while you're hitting pads and be checking wow. Eureka um, is really is a really nice um, bit of the user interface on here. Whereas with Machina Plus, if you remember, we had to hit that channel button and go into the channel settings page, tab around, um between midi audio whatever and do the settings each time now i did add um an arpeggiator to um the mpc live in one of their um updates i think 2.4 2.5 but um and you would think i always think it's going to be when i hit pad perform i'm going to i'm always looking for it in here um, chords and scales and things but actually it's accessible by hitting um, note repeat and holding that down and then you've got the timing options but you've also got um, ARP at the bottom there and that is how uh, <laughs> that is how um, you get into the arpeggiator and once that screens up you can do all the settings you want. Hang on. Uh, yeah, you know how ARPs work, right? Um, that's that's nice. Once you've got it up, it works really well. I have to say that, you know, and you can tell I'm struggling because I'm doing that one-handed while I'm holding my phone, which isn't ideal. But one thing... Uh, the machine does really nicely in terms of all those main functions um, for performance and um, MIDI MIDI control. You have the art well, note repeat slash art button uh, there um, that gives you access to that page, and you can you can pin the art or not. You've also got the basic pad mode keyboard so you go chromatic or access to scales same with chords access to different progressions etc um so for me that makes using um uh, using the devices uh kind of midi control and accessing those functions um it definitely feels a bit easier to me on the machina plus but you know no biggie, they both do all those things really well. The Machina's browser is one of its strong points, uh, for sure. You can choose what you're looking for up here, whether it's uh, loading a whole project, a group, which populates all the um, pads at once, like a kit, and... Um, sounds instruments effects loops samples they're all categorized like that uh, you can filter down by an expansion pack so these are native instrument impact expansion packs that i've loaded into machina and then whatever you've got selected you can then filter by type of sound and um uh, other kind of like characteristics you know so in percussion you've got all these options so it's really quick when you're in the middle of um, building a track and you're looking for a particular sound uh, to try and find something that works. And, um, and it's all done through, um, it's all done through these uh, encoders and the main encoder to sort of search and select. And the way it's set up just means you can use them really quickly really hands-on it's it's a brilliant user interface really for uh, browsing where it falls down slightly and particularly in comparison to the 
MPC workflow is when you want to load and um, manage your own sounds. So, as an example, I'm going to now um, plug in this SSD, which is kind of like my hard drive with loads of sample packs, etc. on. All right, I'm going to plug that in. I'm going to go to um, settings and library. Uh, I'm going to then select user. And you can see that um, I've already scanned this particular drive to make um, some of the folders there available. Um, and if I want to add more, I can just click this add button. Um, but for now, let's work with what's on there. Let's go back to the browser and, at the, and click user. And now you can see the title of those folders from the hard drive that I've just attached here. And then I can, just like with the expansion packs, I can select a particular folder and I can select a bank. So these are the sample packs that are loaded up there. And sub banks, so the folders of sounds within a sample pack. So far, so good. But what happens is you've only got four layers or four levels deep um, when you add uh, a drive with user sounds. So if your folder structure is deeper than that, the way you set it up on your computer, or if that's what the sample pack has, it happens to have five or six folders within a sample pack, it starts kind of um, breaking down because um, you'll lose um, some of that hierarchy, some of that folder structure, and you'll just start getting like loads of samples kind of bundled together, basically. Hard to explain, but... It just it just limits the way um, the way the browser works because it's up a specific way uh, when you are running your uh, own user sounds. Of course, with um, with the expansion packs and you know these are all pre-made and tagged to run in the browser, so they work perfectly. But user sounds they have that folder sort of structure limitation. And they also, unless you've gone through and manually tagged them, you'll see over here, we don't have all that tagging capability. On the MPC, if we load an empty project and pull this new side panel that was introduced in a recent update, you'll see we have direct access to sounds, which is, um, the main library of sounds, you know, featuring all the expansion packs or user expansions, if you've added them, organized by kits in the case of the drum programs or the plugins that um, come with the MPC. So, you know, you can see um, hype, tube, sorry, hype, uh, tube synth and um, all the others, you know, like virtual instrument emulations that run in standalone and all the sounds within them in banks. OK, um, so that's pretty straightforward. That's the sound area. Uh, if you want to browse for anything else, basically, apart from sounds. Um, you go to um, the browser and this is where everything lives. It's a bit more confusing to navigate, but you get used to it. You know, there's the different categories and different folders are all laid out a bit more like you would find them on a computer. Um, and in contrast to the Machina, which, as we saw, when you load um, a user drive, uh, doesn't work quite as well because it's got that very specific, you know, browser system that relies on... Um, tagging in contrast to the machina when you um, plug in your uh, external drive into the um, mpc live you can see it's come up here we can select it and we can explore it just as we would on a machine doesn't matter how many uh, subfolders or levels you've got in your folder structure you can go right down through those see everything 
and load a sample into your sample pool or a whole bank into your sample pool really easily. Um, and you can navigate up again, much like you would use, you know, Finder on a Mac or your um, whatever it is on Windows kind of files and folders. That's a that's a major win for me. Um, the ease of use of, uh, you know, loading and saving user content, not just all these sample packs and things, but obviously you can go in, you can save, um, you can save anything into uh, a drive. You know, you can set up folders for um, uh, projects, um, and and you know even um, save event information as patterns etc etc so it's a lot easier to use compared to machina so hopefully that brief overview of these two machines side by side in terms of their internal workflow and project structure has given you um, a better insight into which one might work better for you depending on what you're used to or what you are trying to do with your own setup. Um, there are clear differences. The MPC, as I've mentioned, is more, uh, will be more familiar to people who are used to um, a timeline-based workflow and arranging songs section by section um, and who maybe like working with templates Whereas Machina Plus is going to feel more familiar to you if you like the idea of working with lots of different patterns and, and mixing them up, mixing and matching those, almost creating an arrangement through performance. Um, MPC is more like a door. With that comes like more capabilities for sure, a lot more things you can do but also more complexity and honestly much more menu diving um, the machine of plus once you're actually working on projects doesn't really have much menu diving sure there's a few double button presses and things like that you need to learn but it's much more about using the pads the buttons and the encoders to get at everything really quickly mm -hmm.